All right, here's example four with the second derivative test, which uh, I think may have been example three with the first derivative test. I um, might have gotten these mixed up here. But anyway, um, so we just want to find where the local extrema occur for this function f of x equals 2x minus 5 to the 7 thirds. So um, if we go back to our steps here, uh, step zero, find the domain of f of x. So uh, in this case, what are we doing? We're taking a real number x, uh, multiplying it by 2, subtracting 5, then raising to the 7 thirds. So the only place we might have to worry about here is this to the 7 thirds, but actually uh, you can take any number and raise it to the 7 thirds, right? So the 7 is definitely not a problem, but the 1 third, you know, that's just like a cube root, right? So this is like to the 7th and then to the 1 third, um, but, which is just a cube root, but that's okay for any real number. So the domain for this function is uh, all real numbers, okay? Because everything we're doing here is okay for any number. So that's good. Um, so no domain restrictions here. So now uh, step one, find all the critical points uh, of f of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So if f of x is 2x minus 5 to the 7 thirds, then f prime of x uh, is going to be, so bring down the exponent, so that's uh, just a power rule type thing, 7 thirds times this quantity uh, 2x minus 5, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, so 7 thirds minus 1, so that's like a 7 thirds minus 3 thirds, which is 4 thirds. Uh, and then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of what's on the inside. So in other words, multiply by the derivative of 2x minus 5, which is just 2. So uh, we can simplify just a little bit, and that's going to be 7 thirds, blah, 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 times 2. So this is 14 thirds uh, times the quantity 2x uh, minus 5 to the 4 thirds. Okay. So... Um, that's our first derivative. Now, we want to find all the critical points, so that's uh, the values of x where the derivative is undefined or where it equals zero. Uh, this is never undefined, okay, so we only have to know when this is equal to zero. So we take 14 thirds, uh, 14 thirds times 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds and set it equal to zero. Okay. So this is only going to happen uh, when 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds equals 0. So, you know, multiply both sides by 3 over 14, uh, cancel, cancel. 0 times 3 over 14 just is 0, so we just have this left. So uh, 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds equals 0, so we can just raise both sides to the 3 fourths. Okay. 0 to the 3 fourths is just 0, and then this cancel becomes a 1, so really 2x minus 5 equals 0 is what we end up with. Uh, so 2x equals 5. So x equals 5 halves. Okay, so that's our only critical point here. Um, so that's uh, it for step one, find all the critical points. Now, uh, for the first derivative test, in that video what we did was we set up the sign chart, uh, evaluate the first derivative uh, in each interval, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, for, but here, now we're just going to find the second derivative. And it's not going to be too bad. So uh, our first derivative is this. So let's go ahead and rewrite the first derivative. So f prime of x equals uh, 14 thirds times 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds. Okay, so our second derivative, f double prime of x, uh, is going to be 14 thirds times, now just a power rule thing again, right? Uh, times 4 thirds times the quantity uh, 2x minus 5. And then power rule says subtract 1 from the exponent, so 4 thirds minus 1, that's 4 thirds minus 3 thirds, which is 1 third. And then the chain rule says uh, multiply by the derivative of what's on the inside, okay? And what's on the inside, 2x minus 5, its derivative is 2, okay? So that's what we have there. Okay, so um, now we don't really have to simplify, but why not? Let's just go ahead and do that. So uh, 14 thirds times 4 thirds times 2. So this is going to be uh, 14 times 4, which is 56, and then times 2 is 112. So, uh, and divided by 3 times 3, which is 9. So 112 over 9 times uh, 2x minus 5 to the 1 third. Okay, so that's our second derivative here. Now what we want to do, uh, well that's it for step 2, find the second derivative. Okay, And we didn't really even have to simplify it this much. We could have just left it like this, really, because all we care about is... Uh, you know, when we do the next step, um, evaluate the second derivative at each critical point uh, where the first derivative is, uh, where it exists. Um, all we care about is, is the value positive, is it negative, is it zero? But anyway, um, let's go ahead and do that next step.
So uh, evaluate the second derivative at each critical point C where the first derivative exists. So uh, f double primed of uh, five halves. Okay. That was our only critical point. So that's going to be uh, 112 over 9 times uh, 2 times 5 halves minus 5 to the 1 -third. 2 times 5 halves is 5. Okay. 5 minus 5 is 0, and that's bad. So 0 to the 1 -third is 0. 0 times 112 over 9 is 0. So we end up with 0. And why is that bad? Well, because uh, step 4 says if f double prime to c exists, which it does, it's 0 then uh, apply the second derivative test. And we end up with this case here, f double prime to c equals zero, which means we have to try something else, which usually means the first derivative test. So, you know, this one wasn't too bad, but we went through all this work here using the second derivative test, and we just ended up with uh, no conclusion here. So that makes us sad as usual. Um, so here, the second derivative test is inconclusive. Um, you know, we could have a min, uh, a max, or neither at this value of x uh, five halves here. And if you remember back from the first derivative test video, uh, when we did that, I think what we ended up with was, uh, yeah, there's no, this is neither a min nor a max. Okay? If you do the first derivative test, you can figure that out. Uh, and there is that other video we did. But with the first derivative test, that'll help you figure that out. Um, there's neither a min nor a max here. But again, the second derivative test tells us nothing. Okay? So that's it for example four. Uh, not really too complicated, but it's just a simple example, or a slightly more complicated example than the other ones we looked at. Uh, a few videos ago of, you know, what can happen here. The second derivative test might fail. Uh, it'll be inconclusive, and you just can't say what's, you know, what's going on. You have to try something else. Uh, so that's example four with the second derivative test.